Hello everyone, in this video, we're going to find out about Constraint Induced Movement Therapy. Do you know what is CIMT? CIMT is therapy that forces the client to use the affected upper extremity by constraining or limited the less affected or unaffected upper extremity in a sling, meat or a combination of both. CIMT also evidence-based rehabilitation technique designed to increase the functional use of affected hand for individuals with brachial plexus injury BPI and children with obstetric brachial plexus injury or BPI. Okay, net what is BPI? BPI is referred to the degree of injury at any level of the plexus and range from the obstetric injuries to traumatic invulsions. And what is OBPI? OBPI is an uncommon injury in newborn children, refers to the damage to the brachial plexus that occurs at birth and may be related to difficult labor and delivery. How does CIMT work? Firstly, the therapist will constrain or limit the unaffected side which is the normal or stronger side of the patient. Secondly, the restriction will be achieved by applying a constraint such as spleen, sling, mid, glove or bandage. Then, wearing this restriction, the patient will unable to utilize the unaffected upper limb in order to perform hand activities in some period of time. And lastly, in this period, a therapist will be enrolled the affected side of the upper limb to ongoing the intensive and repetitive training. And the patient is required to practice the functional task by using the affected side of the upper limb. There are three components of CIMT. Firstly, constraining client to use affected upper extremity during 90% working hours. Secondly, perform repetitive task oriented which is an individual functional task with an affected upper extremity that takes 15 to 20 minutes and rest provided is required or following shaping technique for several hours a day for 10 or 15 consecutive weekdays. What is shaping technique? Shaping technique is a technique in which tasks are gradually increased in terms of the level of difficulty and providing immediate encouraging feedback. Shaping technique can be shaped by adjusting the load, for example, adjusting the weight of the objects, adjusting the size of an object, and increasing the influence of gravity to challenge strength. Another way to shape an activity is challenge the speed. For example, increase the number of repetitions, reduce the time taken to complete the task, and increase the amount of time the task to carry over. Another way is change the object position. For example, pressing the object further away and rising the height of an object. Last component of CIMT is applying a package of behavioral methods that transfer gain from the clinical setting to real life. Includes a behavioral contract that identifies tasks the participant will attempt, for example, home diary. Next is inclusion criteria of CIMT. In inclusion criteria of CIMT, client need have high motivation, ability to move the affected arm in 45 degrees of shoulder flexion and abduction, 90 degrees of elbow flexion and extension, 20 degrees of wrist extension, 10 degrees of finger extension by available active ROM, and 10 degrees of active thumb abduction. Another inclusion criteria of CIMT are no significant cognitive impairments or have mild cognitive impairments, no pre-existing comorbidities that might interfere with mobility and function, and lastly, ability to identify an individual or caregiver who could assist with the home program. There are two types of model of CIMT. First one is traditional CIMT. In traditional CIMT, client need to restrain the non-affected upper extremity for 90% of waking hours in a two weeks period. Engage in 6 hours of functional oriented using the affected limbs on the 10 weekdays over 2 week period. And behavioral training techniques are used to help clients to transfer functional gains into the real world activities. Another model of CIMT is modified CIMT. In the modified CIMT, client need to restrain the unaffected upper extremity and therapy sessions are performed for 30 minutes 3 times per week over a 10 week period that involve repetitive task practice and behavioral training techniques. Okay, next, let's watch together example of case study about Mr. Andrew, 49 years old, and has right-sided hemiplegia since birth. Hi, my name's Andrew. Uh, I'm 49 and I'm from Doncaster, but uh, Newcastle originally. 
I have got slight hemiplegia of the right hand side that affects my whole right hand side of my body. Uh, I was born with it and I've had it all my life. You just adapt to everything so it's, you don't really sort of think about how it hinders you when you've had it your whole life. Andrew completed a two week CIMT program with us six months ago. He has more than 10 degrees of active extension in his wrist and his fingers, which means that we have something to work with in CIMT and something to improve on. It's a condition he's had since birth, so it's more than six months. It was an absolute pleasure seeing Andrew today again, uh, especially after the improvements that he's made in the past six months. So for the first time, I've seen There's no upper age limit for CIMT and it's been carried out on people of 80 years and above and been successful. The main benefit I've had from doing the CIMT is I can now pick cutlery up easier, pick smaller objects up easier, have more secure in your grip, fiddly work like on a mobile phone and things like that, whereas I used to do it all with my left hand, now I can if I think about it, do it with my right. To enjoy the competitiveness of watching your times of the stuff go down. Little things like you might get two, two, three degrees more movement, which is like sort of, you know, appears to be very little at the time, but it is quite significant. Andrew has shown a big improvement in finger and wrist extension, active forearm supination, and he's improved his shoulder control. He reports that he now instinctively uses his right side more when doing everyday tasks at home, such as opening the fridge, cooking, opening bottles of water and cans. It challenges your mindset more than anything. Just because you've never tried to do it or don't think you can do it doesn't mean to say you can't do it. It's the way of finding your way around things. It's giving things a go. It was eye-opening in a way and it was liberating, but at the same time it was hard work. If you go in with the right attitude to this and you work well with your therapist, they've got the power to change your life. They've got the power to change the way you're thinking, but you've also got that power and you've got to change the way you think about things. And it will make you question yourself and it will make you think about things, but it's all in a good way.